Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my review of the Polaroid Now Instant Camera, available in an ever-increasing array of finishes, including this rather fabulous Keith Haring Special Edition, adorned with the graphics of the iconic American pop artist. And here he is on the right, with fellow pop icon Andy Warhol on the left, both avid Polaroid shooters back in the day, and painted here by the postman in Brighton's Block Bar. Since I have the posters, the t-shirts, and even the Converse shoes, I just had to review this version of the camera. The Herring edition of the Polaroid now costs $119 or £129, making it only about $10 or $20 or pounds more than the standard finishes, so it's a bargain if you're into his style. The box is also branded with Herring graphics, and Polaroid includes some notes on the artist too. It's a really nice collaboration. Like other Polaroid Now cameras, it takes iType or 600 series film cartridges, with the latest iType cartridges costing around $16 or pounds per pack and containing eight prints. So that works out about $2 or pounds per print, although the price does fall a little if you buy packs of three or five. Like other instant processes, the chemicals are built into the paper, so everything you need is in the cartridge. Polaroid sells iType film in colour or black and white versions, as well as with a variety of borders, including, you guessed it, a Keith Haring option with different designs. iType film produces fairly large prints, measuring 88 by 107 millimetres or 3.5 by 4.2 inches, with the actual square image in the middle measuring 79 by 79 mil or 3.1 by 3.1 inches, with a thicker border on one side that contain the chemicals but becomes a handy place to write notes with a Sharpie pen later. This makes it the largest of the Square Instant formats. Here it is on the left with Instax Square to its right, then Instax Mini for reference, and finally the tiny Polaroid Go format on the far right. So it's the biggest, but also the most expensive of the three Square formats, with the prints working out roughly double the price of Instax Square or Polaroid Go. In terms of physical design, controls and operation, it's the same as other Polaroid Now cameras. Size-wise, it's actually roughly similar overall to an Instax Square camera, at least lying down, despite delivering larger prints. But if you want a truly tiny instant camera, the Polaroid Go remains the one to beat. It looks absolutely tiny next to the Now and Instax cameras. To load iType film, remove the cartridge from the foil packet, open the front of the camera and push the cartridge all the way in before clicking the door shut. The first sheet to emerge is the disposable safety cover. Like other Polaroid Now cameras, it employs a built-in rechargeable battery that's charged over a micro USB port and it's good for about 15 cartridges. The controls are the same too. In the rear corner, you'll find the power and flash buttons alongside a digital counter indicating the number of pictures remaining. Composition is with an optical viewfinder alone and while there's no selfie mirror or even semi-reflective viewfinder coating as you'll find on the Go model, it's easy enough to take selfies by just pointing the camera at yourself. Below the viewfinder on the front right is a small button to toggle between the double exposure mode and the self timer, although note there's no tripod mount. Exposure is fully automatic with no manual overrides, and unlike the One Step Plus which needed you to switch between distant and close subjects, the Now camera automatically switches lenses itself. And when you're ready, just push the big red button to take the shot. The print will then emerge under a spring-loaded protective shield, which you should leave for a few seconds before removing the print and placing it either face down or in a dark place like a bag or a pocket to complete development. The print should be fully developed after a few minutes, but remember to keep it protected from light during this time. No need to shake it either. The mantra should now be, shade it like a Polaroid picture. So here's a bunch of shots I took with the Polaroid now around Brighton, first with the herring bordered film and then with the standard cartridge. The mild wide angle coverage is ideal for general snaps, selfies and small group shots. And I was fond of the natural looking tones and colours as well as the camera's ability to fairly confidently handle both very bright and very dim conditions. Something that not all Instax cameras find as easy. The improved flash also did a good job of balancing the exposures. But how do they directly compare against other instant formats? Here's some examples of the same view taken with a variety of instant cameras for comparison, starting with the Polaroid Now on the left, followed by Instax Square, then Instax Mini, and finally the tiny Polaroid Go. Now, apart from the obvious size differences, you can see how Fujifilm's two Instax processes here delivers a higher contrast with a punchier style, albeit sometimes crushing the shadows and highlights. Whereas Polaroid's iType opts for a more natural style, leaving the Go to look the most muted here for a truly vintage feel. There's no winner here, only a personal preference, so which is your favourite process? 
You certainly can't argue with the size of the R-Type prints though, which are comfortably bigger, albeit more expensive than its rivals, other than Fujifilm's strangely neglected Instax wide format. It's also interesting to directly compare Polaroid's R-Type prints alongside their more recent Go format, which you might first assume is just a shrunken version. But judging from my own test prints anyway, R-Type proved to be more accurate and better balanced overall versus the more muted, vintage approach of the Go. Again, no winner, just different styles. I really enjoyed using the Polaroid Now system. It may remove almost all manual control for an easier experience, not to mention lack the Bluetooth control of the One Step Plus, but it generally did a pretty good job at capturing the subjects I pointed it at. The prints were also refreshingly natural looking and relatively large compared to Fujifilm's Instax Mini and Square formats, albeit more expensive per shot. As a huge Keith Haring fan, I of course loved the branding, even though the graphics around the camera became a little stretched and distorted on the underside to fit the unusual shape of the body. It's still the finish I'd go for though. Ultimately, I love that Polaroid and Fujifilm are taking quite different approaches to instant photography with cameras and processes to suit different styles and tastes. I'd be very happy to have the Polaroid now in my own collection, especially with the Keith Haring branding. Polaroid may be a small operation, but I think they're doing a great job here. Are you into instant cameras? Let me know which is your preferred system and don't forget to check out my other reviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.